that you would say, so far we've got patient, St. Mary is patient, pure, willful, submissive, strong or strength, faithful, humble. She treasured up the things of God. She was wise, generous, and a servant. Other things that you would say describe St. Mary. Yes. She was disciplined, okay. And Miriam? She was obedient. She was obedient. Lots of beautiful words here that we are. I'm going to actually next to submissive. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 she was not disobedient. Sorry, 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 sorry. Wait, what? Discipline. Discipline. No, discipline. All right, we're good. All right, you guys get my point. Discipline. Discipline. Yes. I put discipline and obedient together. That forms disobedient. All right. Excellent. I'll go back to using PowerPoint, hopefully. <laughs> All right, other things that you would say describe St. Mary? Yes? Vulnerable. She was vulnerable. How was she vulnerable? As a human being, I mean, we need all the things are so, like, you know, positive, but she was a human being, and she was young, and in a society where she, took, she faced a lot of shame. Yes. By virtue of circumstances. Okay. So she was vulnerable at people's judgment and maybe being um, punished for seemingly committing a sin. Good. Excellent. So in, in spite of all of these positive attributes, she was, as a human, she was still vulnerable. She was, she was just like the rest of us in um, her ability to, to struggle, to suffer, all of those sorts of things. Excellent, excellent points. And now I want you to think of the person who most impacted you in life with sharing Christ with you. And what distinguishes that person in your mind? Maybe it's one of these attributes, maybe it's something else. Think about the person who has most impacted you to bring Jesus to, to you, for you to know Christ, for you to have a relationship with God, what about that person is distinguished in your mind? Okay. What attributes or characteristics would you look at and say, that person has these attributes? Servant. They were a servant. Okay. They were a servant. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Um, gentle. They were gentle. Okay. Good. Anything else? The assumption here is that we've all received Christ, that we've all been impacted by Christ, okay? that Christ has come into our lives in some way, and that coming in has come about through another person, okay? that God has used another person to reach us for himself. Yes, Hervey? Humble. Humble, okay, excellent. So this person was humble. Good, Paul? Leadership. Leadership, okay. Excellent. Good. Others? Yes, John. Uh, loving. They were loving. Okay. Good. Yes. He was patient. He was patient. We have patient up here. Yes. Good. None of them were disobedient? No? All right. Anything else? Enduring. Enduring. Endearing or enduring? enduring. Okay, enduring. Um, so I'm going to connect that to patient in a sense. Okay, good. Other things you would say for the person that you think about that most deeply impacted you and brought you to the knowledge of God. Yes. Perseverance. Okay, perseverant. Uh, don't judge my spelling. All right, scribble, scribble. Yes. Anything else? That person was in communion with Christ. I'm just going to put a big check right here next to St. Mary, okay? This person was in communion with Christ. Yes. Selfless. Selfless. Good. Selfless. Look at all of these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful characteristics. Now, I want you to think of one last thing here. Well, two more questions. 
how was the gospel witnessed to you? In what way, what form did you first look and say, I have finally seen the light? I finally, and I'm not asking you to describe the, like, just in general, like, how did that come about? What, what happened? Was it uh, an event? Was there a sermon? Was it a, something you saw someone do? Uh, a, a mother praying? Uh, a father sacrificing? What, what was it that you saw that hit it for you? Maybe it was in your own time of prayer. Anyone have a mo like time where they can look back and they can say, that's when it finally hit me like a ton of bricks. How the gospel was shared with you or is being shared with you or has most effectively been shared in your life we don't tend to think about this one okay let me ask you one last question then and I'll, I'll answer that second question during the talk last question is what do you think it is that prevents us from more consistently sharing Christ with others. Okay? What is it that most, that most affects us or affects us most to not be more consistent in sharing Christ with others? Just shout out some things. Embarrassment. Embarrassment. Not memorizing verses. Not knowing the scripture. Not memorizing. Okay. Not memorizing scripture or knowing scripture. Uh-huh. Embarrassment we got. What else? Appeasement. Wanting to appease others, okay? Not being filled. Not being filled. Not being stereotyped. Not wanting to be stereotyped or labeled. Good. Not An issue of responsibility. Not thinking it's my responsibility. Good. Anything else? Let's take two more, three more. Thinking Thinking more of myself than of others, okay? I'm going to put that under pride. Pride. Pride is thinking more of myself than the other person. Good. Laziness. Laziness. Anyone else? Monetary loss. Monetary loss. Wow, that's a big one. That is a big one. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right, all of this, I think, is, um, is really... Uh, very telling, and, and when we look at, and this is a, a, a nice mind map here, it's a, a bit convoluted, but this is how most of our minds work, whether we realize it or not. But when we look at the life of St. Mary, she was someone who we describe in, in many different ways. We have patient, pure, submissive, willful, strong, faithful, humble. Uh, she treasured up what God had given to her. She was wise, generous, she was a servant, she was obedient, she was gentle, all of these things actually that have been listed either about St. Mary or about someone who touched you, we could say the vast majority of them relate to the life of St. Mary in some way. And all of these attributes in some way have impacted each and every one of us. Realizing it or not, when we look at St. Mary, oftentimes we have all these different titles for her. We speak about St. Mary as the Virgin, the Theotokos, the, uh, the Panageia, the All-Holy. Okay, all of these beautiful things that we say about her, the tabernacle, the, the vineyard, as we heard today in the, the gospel. But there's one title that I want to say that I think is appropriate for her, but never given to her, which is, I believe, when I look at the life of St. Mary, that she was the first and greatest missionary to live. Okay? Usually we think of missionaries, we think of St. Paul who preached all over Europe, all over the known world at the time. We think of St. Mark coming to Egypt and people in the Coptic church love, love St. Mark. He was the great, great evangelist and missionary. Okay? Those from India love St. Thomas. St. Thomas went to India and preached all over India. But I think when we look at a person who's a missionary, it's a person who has brought Christ to others. Okay? They've been sent by God to bring Christ to others. And the first person to do just that was St. Saint, Saint Mary. Okay? We don't usually think about her in that way because 
She tended to be a person that didn't speak much. The one thing that you'll notice about this list, whether it was about St. Mary or it was about the person who touched you personally, was up on that list, nowhere, is a person who spoke a lot. Wasn't a single person listed up there that they gave like a great sermon. You, you don't find that on the list, okay? And what's interesting, when we look at St. Mary, her words are very few. And in fact, she oftentimes received things from God and simply lived it out. She carried Christ in herself and took him to other people. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 42. Because in that passage, we find St. Mary doing just that. We find the great first missionary, St. Mary, taking Christ within herself to other people. Entering a home and introducing Jesus Christ to her family. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 42. Now Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. Now this passage comes right on the tail end of when St. Mary had received the message from Archangel Gabriel. He told her, you are going to carry the Savior of the world. And you're going to call his name Jesus. And by the way, yes, I know you're a virgin, but this is going to be a gift from God. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. She wanted to understand, but he gave her more, and then she said, let it be to me according to your will. I'm your maidservant, whatever you want. As soon as she receives the Holy Spirit, he comes upon her, and Christ is, comes into her womb. He's conceived inside of her. We find that she immediately gets up and goes on this journey. And when she goes on this journey, in verse 40, it says, And she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, and the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. St. Mary, Holy Spirit comes upon her. She gets up, she goes on this trip to go into a house that had not yet received Christ. And what happens as soon as she walks in? The babe in her womb worships Jesus and Elizabeth herself is filled with the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful model of service. What a beautiful model of mission. She received something from God. She received not just something from God, but she was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was in communion with God, and she carries him to another person. And as soon as she enters, that other person's life is impacted. The beautiful thing is sometimes a person who is filled with God comes to us. And we don't even realize how deeply impacted we've been. Initially. Sometimes a person, they come in, like there's a, a priest that I know, he's, he's like a spiritual tornado. Okay? He walks in anytime I'm in a meeting with this man. He's one of the cal most calmest, most meek men you'll ever meet. He walks into a room, everyone kind of gathers around, and he just starts speaking. And he starts like just having conversations, simple interactions. And by the time he's done, he gets up and he leaves, and you just, you feel something different has happened, okay? There's nothing profound that he says, nothing deeply like transformative. You're not like losing your minds because, wow. But you feel like this spiritual tornado has just wrecked through and flipped everything upside down. When St. Mary walked in that day, it was like a tornado. Elizabeth and Zacharias were deeply impacted. Their life got flipped upside down. Why? Not because of something intrinsic in St. Mary, but because she carried in her, faithfully, the Savior of the world. And as a result of that, Holy Spirit comes inside of Elizabeth. What's a missionary? A missionary is simply someone sent by God to deliver the good news about Jesus Christ.
someone sent by God to deliver the good news about Jesus Christ. I want you to imagine the conversations that must have taken place over the next several months as St. Elizabeth and St. Mary are sitting there talking and St. Mary's sharing with St. Elizabeth the incredible news that she had just received from the angel Gabriel. And she told her and sat there and said, he came to me and he told me, and I'm a virgin and I don't know how, and I asked him, how could this be? And he told me the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. You're going to bear the Savior and his name is going to be called Jesus, which means save us. A missionary is someone who doesn't come and yells at people or tears them down or tells them how much, like, how worthless they are and how they're trash and how they're rubbish and they'll never amount to anything. No, no, no. A missionary is someone who goes to others and shares with them the good news, the best news, that God has become man in order to give us new life. That Jesus Christ, the God-man, has come in the flesh. This whole season when we speak about St. Mary, it's a reminder for us, in fact, that it's not, we're not coming to look at St. Mary, but we're coming to look at the one seated on the lap of St. Mary, to praise him as we said in the hymn today, Rejoice, O Mary, for the cherubim and the seraphim praise the one and worship the one who's seated on your lap. And we too, we worship him. And we cry out, Holy, Holy, Holy. The missionary is the one who always wants to direct people back to Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what this great woman, St. Mary, has done. The Holy Spirit is the one who energizes the call. Oftentimes people say, like, I, I want to do something great for God. I want to share God with others. But where do I start? What books do I read? What's the manual? What's the five-step program to sharing Jesus with other people? And I'll tell you, I think we get it backwards. It's not, doing mission is not a program that we do. Like, I always think it's hilarious. People, people say to me, they're like, so what do you guys do? What's the program you guys do at St. Anianus? And I'm like, what are you talking about? What program? They said, no, like, how do you guys tell other people about, I'm like, we just share with them what God has done in our own lives. That's it. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, we get that. But what program do you follow? Let me point you to the program that we are supposed to follow. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You know the program that we follow? The program is that we come before God and we let the Holy Spirit come upon us. And we let the Holy Spirit come upon us and fill us and transform us. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and fills us and transforms us and we go and speak to others, the Holy Spirit in John, the Gospel of John chapter 16, will give us the words that we should testify of Jesus. And that is we read scripture and we let the scripture be implanted in our hearts and we treasure those things up and keep them in our hearts that when the time is appropriate, the Holy Spirit will give us recollection of those words that we have sat and we've meditated on and we've labored on and we've treasured because those words are so pure and so beautiful and so life-giving. That's the program we follow. A program of sharing the gospel is not, these are the seven steps you say, and when this person says this, these are the three rebuttals that you give, and then if that happens, then you take them down this route. No, no, no. That is human work. I'm not saying that there's not a place for preparation and reading and study. What I'm saying is we cannot replace the work of God with our work. In the, uh, in the Sunday Theotokeia, Sunday Theotokeia, there's a, a part on there, it's the second Sunday, or second part of the Sunday Theotokeia. I'm going to attempt to write it out here for you all, because I, I think it's a, a really beautiful, beautiful section. And we're going to break it down it says, you too, O Mary, are clothed with the glory 
of the divinity. Within and without. And you've brought, for you have brought, unto God your Son. Son, not some. Uh, many people. Anyone know the rest? Through your Let's leave that blank, okay? Let's leave that blank. So this section, I believe, is, is so powerful and so telling because in the Sunday Theotokei, this actually, I think, is a very beautiful uh, explanation of what it means for us following the model of the virgin who received God inside of her and went and shared him with Elizabeth and Zacharias and, and all those who are in the house. First section here, it says, You too, O Mary, are clothed with the glory of the divinity within and without. This first section right here tells us what our purpose is supposed to be. This is what we're supposed to be. This is purpose. Okay? Our purpose, in fact, is not to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Our purpose is not, my purpose is not to be a priest an evangelist, a missionary. My purpose, your purpose, the human purpose, is to be clothed with the glory of the divinity within and without. Put it another way, it's for us to be clothed with Christ, to put on Christ, to become one with God, to live a life of communion with Him, to be filled by Him, to be united to Him. And the apex of our life we see during the liturgy, in communion, where we receive Him, right? That, we are told, is the climax, that's the apex, that's what life should look like. This is what we're saying here in a very true way. She was clothed with the glory of the divinity, not just within, but also without. It transformed her on the inside, and it transformed her on the outside. And that glory of God, not our glory, not our work, but the glory of God, is that which transforms us on the inside, and as a result of that inner transformation, leads to an outer transformation. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 3 and 4. Ezekiel 43, verse 3 and 4. Okay? Because in, you, in it, you see what happens when the glory of God fills a place. When the glory of God fills a person, we see what happens in this passage. Ezekiel 43, verse 3 and 4 says, I fell on my face, and the glory of the Lord came into the temple by way of the gate, which is faces towards the east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So the Holy Spirit comes upon the temple. The glory of God fills the entire place. What's Ezekiel's response? How does, he, how does he act? How does he behave? When the glory of God fills a place, what do we find happening to those who are standing there? The result? He fell on his face. He fell on his face in worship. When St. Mary entered that place that day, the Holy Spirit was inside of her. The glory of God had filled her that day. The babe left in her womb. John the Baptist, the older cousin of Jesus, bows down and worships God. He fell on his face just like Ezekiel did that day. Okay? When the temple, our temple, 1 Corinthians tells us that we are to be temples of the Holy Spirit, right? When the temple is filled with God, the result is that it testifies to the glory of God, which leads others to seek him out and to worship him. Okay? In other words, there's a cause and effect. There's a cause and effect. You study hard, study hard in life, you're probably going to have a better opportunity to pass your classes, right? Not always. Like sometimes people 
I've been given a little bit more IQ level, but you study hard, you're going to do better. You don't study, you're not going to probably do as well, okay? You lift weights every single day, and you'll, like, you'll, look like, well, you'll look like one of these guys back here, okay? You lift weights every day, you'll get bigger. You don't, then don't like look in the mirror and say, I want to look like, who's the big guys now? It was Schwarzenegger back in the day, okay? But you don't look and say, I want to look like that guy, and you do nothing, okay? If cause and effect, if someone's walking by, and you jump out of the closet and scream, most likely what are they going to do? Turn around and punch you, right? Cause and effect. Okay? Cause and effect. Holy Spirit comes upon us. We become clothed with the glory. And it affects other people. There's a natural cause and effect. Our purpose is to simply be image bearers of God. And that's what we find with St. Mary. The result, the outcome, is this second part. This is the outcome. For you've brought unto God many people... Many people, right here. That's the outcome. That's the, that's the result. Okay? So when we are who we are supposed to be, when we fulfill our purpose, when we are clothed with the glory of the divinity within and without, when we live a life of communion with God, when we spend time with Him, when we pray, when we read the scriptures, when we live the life of, of grace, when we live that mis mystical sacramental life, the result, the net outcome is it'll impact other people. For you brought unto God your son many people. Many people. The babe left in her womb. When we come what we're, become what we're supposed to be, then we will naturally do what we're supposed to do, which will impact other people. Years ago, there was a guy back in uh, late 90s, there was a guy that I knew, his name was Mark Johnson. I've shared this story with uh, some of y'all before, but Mark Johnson was a person who I know deeply loved God. He was a guy that every time I'd run into this, this gentleman, he was always talking about Jesus. He always had his Bible in his hand. He was singing about Jesus. He invited us to come back to his carpentry shop one time. He was designing things that had to do with Christ. And he, would, he said, oh, I want you to hear this song that I just wrote. And it was a song about Christ. And I, I didn't understand. I honestly, I, back in those days, I didn't get it. I just thought he was one of these like weird hippie guys, like with long hair and carpenter around the age of 30, kind of looked like Jesus, like what we see in the pictures. But that's what I thought. I looked at Mark, I'm like, he's just a hippie dude, okay? What I didn't realize at the time was this is just a guy who really, genuinely loved God. And as a result of his God, there was something that was energizing and attractive. Not in a fake way, in a really authentic, you know, a very true, authentic love for God. So much so that at one point, he really challenged me on a personal level. And he kept asking, do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a relationship with God? I was like, yeah, I go to church. He goes, no, I didn't ask if you go to church. Do you have a relationship with God? I was like, and I didn't understand. This was like, I was back, I was a teenager. I just didn't get it. And he said, do you have a relationship with him? And I said, I go to the oldest church in the world. Don't you understand? He goes, you're missing the point. And I just didn't get it. But years later, it hit me. It hit me. And I was like, you know what? That crazy guy who loved God so much, maybe he had a point. Maybe he had a point. Maybe I just go to church, but I don't have a relationship with God. And it struck me. It, that seed was planted, and it took fruit many years later. All he knew he had to do was be who he was supposed to be and love God. And he left the rest to God's work. Our purpose is not just to show up. It's to become filled with God's presence, with his glory. And the natural outcome of that is it will naturally energize and attract people to God. Not because we're following some five-part program again, but because we're, just, we, we're loving on God. And I want to tell you there's some, nothing more beautiful in life than a person who loves God. Not a single one of y'all, when you mentioned the list of the person who impacted you, said they gave the most compelling, convicting sermon I've ever heard. They gave the best Sunday school lesson on apologetics about science and faith I've ever heard in my life. Y'all said they were humble, they were servants, 
they were loving, they were patient, they were enduring, they were perseverant. And those are not things that come from them. Those are things that originate from our God who is love, who is patient, who is merciful, who made himself a servant, and who promised in Luke chapter 12 <laughs> that when we're prepared, if we're prepared and we endure, that he himself will invite his servants in and he will gird himself and serve them. This is our master. Those are attributes that we see a person clothed with that come from Christ. The last part, which is the important part, is how does this happen? What does it look like? You too, O Mary, are clothed with the glory of the divinity within and without, before you brought unto God your Son many people through your... This is the messaging. This is the approach. This is the way that St. Mary had been shaped and what her testimony was. Her testimony was through your purity. Through your purity. This is what it looks like this is the approach, if you want to call it that. This was the method that God used in her life to obtain the result of drawing onto people, onto Him, many people. Okay? All of it originated from her relationship with God, but it looked, we look at her and we say she was a pure woman. She lived her entire life in this way. The ever virginity of Mary, she kept herself completely consecrated for God. Some of you have been blessed with the ability to sing. Some of you with the ability to write. Some of you with the ability to speak, to witness to God through your life. Some of you have been blessed with an unusual amount of faith. An unusual and incredible level of mercy and forgiveness. People have hurt you deeply. And not because you want to forgive, but because you've been clothed with God, with Christ himself. And he's given you the ability and the gift of mercy because you've sought him and experienced his forgiveness in your life. And as a result of all of these different things and the ways that you've been shaped in life, the message of God in your life will be the same, but will look different. The same message is God is inviting you to be clothed with him, to put on Christ. But how it will look in your life will look different than my life. Will look different than the person sitting next to you. See, each one of us is unique from one another. There's no two St. Mary's out there. There's no two Michaels. There's no two Matthews. There's no two Jeremy's. No two Christina's. No two Mark's or Monica's. There's no two of us out there. Each one of us is unique. But what's not unique is God's call for us to be clothed with Him. What's not unique is His invitation for us to share Him in an authentic way with others. But what is unique is how it'll look in your life. For St. Mary, it was through her purity. It was through her life of purity that she testified and witnessed to Christ. So I leave you this morning with St. Mary, I think, the great missionary. Not because she preached incredible sermons. Her words are very few. Okay? Not because she traveled all over the world doing great acts of charity or mercy. But because she faithfully lived a life of purity to Christ. She submitted herself to Him completely. And she carried that testimony by being clothed with the glory of Christ himself. Romans chapter 10 verse 15 leaves us with a very beautiful faithful word. It says, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Okay? Who bring glad tidings of good things. I'd like for you to pray this, uh, this afternoon about your own call to bring Christ to others. And I want to assure you, this call is not the call for the priest. It's not the call for the bishop. 
It's not the call for a few people. It's the call for the entire body of Christ. And as you pray this, this, this morning about who it is that you are called to bring Christ to, the starting point for each of us is to realize that that can only be accomplished and realized when we ourselves begin by living a life of communion with God. Okay? The starting point as you pray about that person is you say, God, please make me the person who can shine you to them and give me the way and transform me to become the person who they can understand the word through my life. Okay? And if they can't hear through my life, send them someone else. All glory be to God forever. Amen. All right.